Okay, so let's work through another quick example, slightly more complex. C6, H12, O6, solid, plus O2, gas, produces CO2, gas, plus H2O, gas. This is a combustion reaction. Specifically, it's the combustion of glucose, sugar. So now we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to keep track of. And it's made somewhat more complicated by the fact that oxygen appears in two molecules on the left and two molecules on the right. So for something like that, you're definitely going to want to save oxygen for the end. Um, not least because it's the only element that appears by itself. Okay? It's the pure element over here, whereas carbon and hydrogen only ever appear bound with oxygen. Okay? No pure elements there. So let's go ahead and save oxygen for the end. Another complication, something to keep in mind, is that oxygen appearing in multiple substances on either side it's it's going to you know, tax your ability to multiply and add in order to get to the correct answer. So definitely be careful in keeping track of your atoms to make sure that you've done all your addition correctly. Here on the left, we start with 6 carbon, 12 hydrogen, and 6 plus 2 is 8 oxygen. Over here on the right, we start with 1 carbon, and two hydrogens and three oxygens. Well, let's just dive right in. Okay, so let's uh, multiply this by six. So that changes the number of carbons to six and the number of oxygens to 12 plus one is 13. Now let's go ahead and multiply this by six as well. Uh, six times 2 gives us 12 hydrogen, then 6 oxygen, 6 times 1, and 12 oxygen, 6 times 2. 6 plus 12 is a total of 18 oxygen. All right, what number do we want over here? Well, A plus B A plus B is equal to 18. And A equals 6. B is equal to some number times 2. Because there are two atoms of oxygen in each molecule of oxygen. So 6 on the left comes from the 6 atoms in sugar. The 2 times N is coming from the molecules of oxygen on the right. Now we just need to solve for that number. That number is the coefficient that's going to go in the blank slot in front of oxygen. So 6 plus 2n equals 18. Subtract 6 from both sides, you get 2n equals 12. Divide both sides by 2. n equals 6. So we just go ahead and erase this really quick. And now 6 times 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18. Those are the coefficients for the combustion of, uh, of glucose. Okay. 1, remember, invisible 1 over here. 1, 6, 6, 6. Yes, the, the heart of respiration is the number of the beast. It's satanic. Now, uh, sometimes you can keep track of molecules instead of keeping track of individual atoms. So what I mean by that is, for say, sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, let's go ahead and call it aqueous, plus calcium uh, nitrate. 
also aqueous. So we have uh, two ionic compounds, each one of which has a polyatomic species, carbonate in one case, uh, nitrate in the other. Okay, and they are going to just swap partners. So you're going to end up with Na and O3 aqueous. Oh dear, I didn't leave quite enough room for myself, so let's go ahead and just shift this over to the left a bit. Aqueous plus calcium carbonate aqueous. Now you can solve this quite directly um, excuse me, um, less directly, just by going through and keeping track of all of the individual atoms, sodium, carbon, oxygen, calcium, nitrogen. You could do that. Um, it would be a little bit easier to do it by keeping track of your ionic species. So we have sodium, oops, sodium, we have carbonate, we have calcium, and nitrate. Uh, sodium starts off with two, carbonate starts off with one, calcium with one, and nitrate with two. And over on the right, it's one, 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 and one. All we need to do to balance this equation is double the moles of sodium nitrate. You double that, we get two sodium ions on the right and two nitrate ions on the right. That simplifies the bookkeeping just a little bit. Um, you don't have to do it this way. If you want to, uh, you can keep track of the individual atoms without having to uh, think about the ions at all. Okay. So, for example, we have sodium we have carbon, we have oxygen, we have calcium, and we have nitrogen. So that starts us off with two, one, um, three plus six makes nine, calcium is one, nitrogen is two. Okay, and now I just realized that I haven't uh, necessarily uh, updated you on this. We, we, we will have, we, we will have, we already have, we have covered the fact that this two on the outside of parentheses means that we have two nitrates, which means that you have to boom multiply the three by two, and boom, the invisible one gets multiplied by two as well, if you're keeping track of individual atoms like that. So, and again, you cannot uh, play around with the subscript. Okay? There's always going to be two nitrates for every one calcium in the calcium nitrate salt even when it's dissolved in water. All right, so coming over to the right, we have one sodium ion. Um, we still have one carbonate. We have three plus three is six oxygen. We have one calcium and one nitrogen. And uh, once again, we put a two in front of that. That doubles the amount of, uh, of uh, uh, sodium then it doubles the amount of nitrogen, then two times three is six, plus three makes nine oxygen. So you'll still get the same answer. It just, it muddies the bookkeeping a little bit, makes it a little bit more complicated. I don't mind, uh, whichever one makes you happy. Given that keeping track of the ions only works for this sort of equation, where you are balancing where you just swapping partners like this. It's called a double displacement reaction, and I just realized I chose this one because calcium carbonate is a solid, it's insoluble. All right. When you're swapping partners like this, a double displacement reaction is one of the few places where you can keep track of substances like this. And it can get complicated because you could have, say, not calcium nitrate, but calcium oxalate, right? You would have carbon over here, you'd have carbon over here, and that would give you a muddy bookkeeping here, whereas you could do CO3 2 minus, C2O4 2 minus, and so long as they don't get split up or changed in any way, then that would work just fine. But if you're looking at a more complicated reaction, uh, sodium dichromate, CO2 
7 reacting with, I don't know, uh, H2O2. Uh, that wouldn't react. Whatever. I shouldn't be trying to make this up off the top of my head. But this could go to CrO4 1 minus or something like that. Okay. In that case, you would not be able to keep track of uh, the polyatomic ions. You'd have to keep track of the individual atoms. So, whatever form of bookkeeping you want, so long as you're actually keeping track of everything that's going on. That's what you do. That's how you do it. That's what you need to do. Now, there are uh, different kinds of chemical reactions. This list here is not exhaustive. It's not exclusive. It is just a few. And as we come upon other reactions, we will talk about them, like the double displacement reaction I talked about. If you have two things joining together to make one, that is a combination reaction. So, for example, hydrogen plus oxygen making water is a combination reaction. <laughs> Do the whole word. And down here at the bottom, uh, or sorry, in the middle, uh, if you have one thing breaking apart into two or more things, that's decomposition. Compose, you're making something. Decompose, you're breaking something down. So, uh, calcium carbonate breaking up into calcium oxide and CO2 is a decomposition reaction. Last on this short little list is a combustion reaction, which is something combining with oxygen to produce heat and some sort of oxide. So, for you know a simple alkane say propane you combine it with oxygen you're going to get uh, co2 and h2o i called them both oxides because it's something combined with oxygen so carbon dioxide dihydrogen monoxide and of course plus heat you know that's heat isn't always included as a reactant to our product but sometimes we do because it is uh, useful to do so so let's see, that's three and four is 10, so five, okay. And that is a combustion reaction. You can combine other things with oxygen and that, that could fairly be called a combustion reaction. So calcium plus oxygen yields calcium oxide. You could just as easily call that a combustion reaction. Very often we limit combustion reactions to uh, talking about alkanes and things like that, but that would be rather strict, uh, formalistic kind of thinking. Let's be flexible. There are other kinds of reactions, but learn to uh, recognize uh, these three definitely. Okay, let's call it a break there. That's the end of lecture two. We'll come back and in lecture three discuss stoichiometry. You're going to love it. Until it until you die to death to death you'll love it to death.